So we'll go ahead and get started with today's webinar. My name is Sean. Oh, so, we're, so you guys still having trouble hearing me? I'm getting one message that you guys can't hear me. Is everyone else able to hear me okay? Let me just give it one second. We'll see if we can get this worked out. All right, so it seems like every, okay. Um, yeah, if you want to just try to restart, um, if you're having trouble hearing me, it seems like everyone else is able to hear me okay. Um, so if you're having an issue with it, just go ahead and restart um, the webinar real quick and see if that fixes the issue. Right? And we'll just give it one minute before we start, um, just to make sure everyone is able to join okay. So again, my name is Sean, and today we're just going to be going over really how our true type fonts work. Um, so when you see them on the website, what to look for, um, <clears throat> how they work in our, how to install them, and how to actually use our font window on the design wizard. So this is a very basic webinar, and we'll start by just going through the fonts and what to look for when you're looking either to purchase a font or match it for a project you're working on. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and look at our website. So to look or find uh, any of our fonts, if you go to shop, and you'll see the fonts tab. So it's going to be its own fonts tab, Not it's not going to be in the designs. You'll see that we have font packs. Um, so these, if you want to click on any of these, they'll include several different fonts. Um, just all random fonts put together. There's no real theme or anything like that uh, for a few of them. And then we also have some that are all HTV fonts, stuff like that. So if you're looking for a bundle, you can definitely check out these font packs. If you're looking for individual fonts, you'll want most likely want to just check out the rhinestone fonts. So the first thing you'll see is that we list our fonts by height. So when you're working with certain designs, you'll want to, you know, most of the time you'll need a certain height of a font um, to make sure it works with the project you're working on. So if we're, we can just kind of go into any of these categories, we'll go 1 6 to 2 inches tall. Now <clears throat> we are still updating the site, so if you see something like that, um, we just haven't uploaded the image for this one yet. Um, but as you can see, each one of these pictures, if I click on one of these, um, you'll see everything that's included in the font. So um, not all of our fonts, this one comes with upper and lowercase, but not all of our fonts come with upper and lowercase. You can see at the end this one comes with numbers and symbols too. So again, not all of the fonts will come like this. What you see in the picture is what you're going to get with that font. So if you only see an uppercase and numbers, that's all that the, that font's going to come with. So it's not actually going to have lowercase with that font. And down here at the bottom, it shows you an example word with that font being used. So you can see that height is 1.8 inches, and for the word cheer, it's about 8.4 inches wide. So you could space the letters in a little bit to help save some room, but this will help you gauge if this font's going to work for you. So if you had to write basketball or you know something like that where it has a lot more characters, and you only have nine inches to work with, well this font probably isn't going to work with work for you because it's going to be too wide. Now when you see a font like this um, it is all in SS10 unless specified um, so the sizing you see here is all with SS10 sizing so if we went to SS6 stones this height will probably be closer to 1.4, 1.5 and then the width 
will go down to probably around six and a half to seven inches. So you can always change the height and width of your font by changing the stone size. Um, but for the most part, you'll want to check and see this area, the height and width, to see if your font, this font will work with the design you're going to use or with the text you're going to use. So I'll show you how that works actually when you're using a font. So we'll come here and we'll just type out basketball. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that as I'm going, you can go ahead and ask um, in the question and I'll go ahead and answer those um, or answer as much as I can. So let's see what font we're working with here. Let's see if I actually have that one, 5832. So I don't have that exact one already downloaded. So we'll just pick a basic font here. So this is TRW. 12 rounded. Now let me just show you how to actually use our fonts tab on the wizard. Now once you install an actual font onto the design wizard you can always find it in your drop down so if you go to the T's um, all of our fonts start with TRW so you'll find all the fonts there. However with our font wizard or the font with font portion of the design wizard you can find these TRW fonts a lot easier so if once we hit this button at the top, again, these little arrows, this little tab will open up, and this is kind of our font tab. So to find our TRW fonts, all we have to do is hit TRW, and then just like that, all of our TRW fonts that are installed will show up in this area. So we went ahead and used TRW 12. Now, when you purchase a font from us, most times it's going to come as long as it's um, not like a resizable font or a vector font, it's going to come as an RF and an SF version. So the difference between those is that this top one is the RF and this bottom one here will make an SF. So the SF version is, stands for sticky flock and that's going to put the sticky flock boxes around your text. So if you wanted to type out the entire alphabet to reuse this um, you can go ahead and do that and it will cut out each one of these letters so then you can go ahead and use them um, as you would with any pre-cut template so sometimes it's better to use you know when you're working and you have a lot of different maybe we're using this example so we have our basketball and underneath it we want to put our ma or the son's name or school's name or something like that um, where it always is changing so it could be mom of aunt of you know stuff like that that's when we want to cut out these actual the entire alphabet but we know this basketball template's going to stay the same we're always going to use the same basketball so we don't want to have to rearrange every letter every time so in this case we could just make this a solid text and then just make one template of the basketball. So the SF version again is just to type out each letter and then you can kind of rearrange them to spell out whatever you want where the RF version will do a one-time template with a certain word you want to use. So with this, once we have our text typed out, um, it's very important when we're working with these fonts is Sometimes when we first start typing out, it might be really small and we want to make it a little bit bigger just to see what we're working with, make sure we spelled everything right, that's okay. Um, but what we need to do is always drag diagonally from one of these corners. If we don't pull from a corner and we pull from the bottom or from the sides, it's going to ruin our text when we go to resize it. So let me show you an example. So just like this. We have our font, this one is pulled diagonally so it's perfect. When I go to hit my resize button, so this is our resize button on the wizard, so we want to make these all SS10 circles. We just hit this once. This is going to pop up. It says not all stones are 0.13. Would you like to replace? We're going to hit yes. So now that you can see, I can click on any one of these circles and up here at the top, it will always say 0.13 inches. So all those circles are going to be perfect. However, if you 
take your text and you pull from the bottom or you pull from the side and then you hit the resize button it's not going to give us that message and then when we go to check our stones it's not even going to be individualized stones you're going to have to break apart and then once you do that you can see that they're not even perfect circles so if you pull a font or you're not getting that point one, if it's not asking you if this is 0.13 inches do you want to proceed so if you're not getting this question it's most likely that you pulled this font in a certain way to distort the perfect circle. So you can see right now those aren't very clean. When I go to resize, it's not going to ask me um, to make sure that they're all 0.13. And then you'll have to go an extra step and break everything apart. And then lastly, you'll see that they're not perfect circles. All right. So these fonts can be really easy, but if you're not using them correctly, you're not. They're not going to work. Um, they're not going to give you perfect circles, so when you go to cut those holes, they're not going to brush in correctly, so then you wasted a lot of material as well. And then, so, with our font tab right here, once we learn how to locate the font we want, so we can do TRW60, so I can just type in 60, and then you'll see both the fonts here. Now, with these fonts, Let's just type out TRW, and you'll see right here in this little window, we have a font preview. So we have an upper and lower preview. So with this font, it comes. what this is saying is that it has an uppercase and a lowercase font. So if I typed in TRW, you'll see that it works in lower or uppercase. So again, not every font is going to come with those. Um, upper and lowercase and at the same time um, not every font that you type in uppercase will be an uppercase um, so let me show you an example of that so right here our TRW24 our font preview you don't see any letters in upper you don't say it's saying uppercase you only see lower but all those lowercase are actually uppercase letters so when I have my TRW font right here, when I have it in all uppercase letters and I go to TRW24, it looks like my font disappeared. And the reason for that is because it does not have an uppercase font. So it doesn't have anything to match those letters. Now if I type the same text in lowercase, then hit TRW24, now you'll see TRW in the new um, selected text. So just because it says lower doesn't mean it's going to be in lowercase and just because it says upper doesn't mean it's going to be in uppercase. So and again if you see your font disappear it's mostly likely that you just have it in the wrong um, case. So up here at the top you'll see all these different um, letters or numbers and all these will help with your fonts um, except the E that's an edit, um, but everything else, U is going to be for upper. Um, this isn't actually an L, so that's going to be our lower. T is going to stand for title case. So you can see if I change these around, if I hit the U for upper, you won't see anything. If, if I hit the L for lower, you'll see it go into my uppercase TRW. If I hit the title case, it's going to make the T upper and everything else lower. So now you won't see the T because it doesn't recognize uppercase letters. And then the T, the two is to change it to a two color and I'll show you that shortly. The V is for vertical text. So if I hit V, it will make my text go vertical instead of horizontal. So if I added the T in there, you can see it has it going vertical now. And if I just hit the V again, it will make it go back horizontally. The B is for break apart, so each one of these, right now it's reading this as one word. If I hit the B, it will break each one of these letters individually. And then the M is for our monogram text, and I'll go over that a little bit later as well. So does anyone have any questions about 
how the font preview works and how actually when you type lower it, will, it can still be an uppercase font. I know it can be a little bit confusing but the font preview should help you realize what you have to type. Yeah, so someone asked if there's an easy way to get a font ready to cut in a sticky flock alphabet. Um, so Try this real quick. So one way we could do it is just easily just typing. And you can even save a document like this. So what I usually do is I'll just kind of save a document like this. And I'll just copy an upper and and what's really nice too is we can use this so now I can just hit upper and that will go all uppercase and then you can do the numbers and I just go through the symbols at the top now not, again not every font's going to have every symbol so I just try to incorporate a lot of them and then you'll see which ones actually come in so let's go here again you can just kind of have this ready and you can save it on a page that way you don't have to go through all this again um, so with certain fonts again this one's all it's pretty much just an uppercase so if I hit upper or if I use the lowercase you'll see all the letters come up now if I hit the numbers and symbols with this font you'll see that this is only 0 through 9 Actually, let's make these sticky flock so once we see that, we can go ahead and just delete everything we're not going to use. So these ones won't convert. So then we have our upper and numbers. And once you're here, all you have to do is hit the resize. Hit yes. And now these will be ready to cut and send right to your cutter. Now when you are cutting them out as sticky flock letters, I recommend cutting out sometimes like the vowels or the M, the N, the S, and maybe the R a couple times because you'll start seeing a lot of words include like double S's or two M's, uh, maybe the same vowel twice, stuff like that. So there's going to be a few letters that you'll want to cut more than once. So you can just easily make a copy of that. So we can just, you, one way you can just highlight, copy, paste and then just drag that right down and now you can have cut out two S's instead of one. So that's pretty much how the rhinestone fonts will work. Now in our font library, let me go back to our website real quick. Shop. So next to the rhinestone fonts, you'll see the heat transfer vinyl fonts. Um, we have a few different categories, including the monogram, so we'll go through those as well. But you can kind of go through these. Um, so we have a tier W exclusive. Um, and again, most of them are going to give you a good example of what they look like. So this is a two color font. Um, you have an outside and inside fill. Um, something like this would just be a one color. And with the vinyl, it's not going to give you actual measurements because you can, with the vinyl, the way that works is you can stretch these out. Either you can go height, width, um, it doesn't matter with these right, uh, vector fonts, they'll work pretty much in any size you want. So let's go ahead and just do an example of this. So we'll do cheer. Now we have a lot of different fonts. Um, some of the ones we have, let me show you real quick, are our sports fonts. So these are pretty neat um, stuff like this where it actually includes gymnastics in the fonts, gymnastic vectors. Um, we have baseball laces. Um, so these are already all created for you. They're magic traps. So what that means is that they'll layer over each other just a little bit so you can use these with any type of um, vinyl material, whether it be glitter, 
um, holographic, easy weed, any of those are going to line up um, for you already pre like already pre layered to um, work correctly. So let's go ahead and check out our tier W cheerleader images. So when I click on this, you'll see that you still have a uh, preview. So you have an upper and lower. Um, now the uppercase is pretty much the outside, and then the or the, sorry, the uppercase is the fill, and then the lowercase is going to be the outside and the inside of those vectors. So, the way this font works, if it was in lowercase, you'd see it this way. If it was all in upper, you would see it that way. Um, just the inside fill. So, the wizard makes it really easy. Instead of trying to, you know, change the color and layer these perfectly on each other, all you have to do is just type it out, either in upper and lower case, hit the two up here on our design wizard, and it will automatically fill in that second color for you. So any type of vinyl two color font that we have, so we can do baseball, and we'll go to our baseball basis. So now we have our upper like that. All we have to do is hit the two and it fills in that outside layer for us and from here if you wanted to you can change any of these colors for your team or to you know for a mock-up anything like that we can change once we hit that too and to show you what I mean is when I hit the wireframe you can see that these are overlapping just a little bit so you can still layer any type of um, vinyl um, whether it be glitter, holographic, easy weed, they'll all work perfectly. So when I double click on, let me convert this to curves. So when I click on my inside now, you can see that this layer goes just a little bit under the red. So if I brought this to the front, you can see how different it looks. So now in the back, you'll see how more of the red shows through and that those lines underneath the red are my gray. So you can still layer these any way you want, any material. Yeah, so now when I pull this up, you'll see that this area of the red is still empty and then the gray will just kind of go right on top of that. Now let me go back one step. So we have this as one and we have our red as the other. Now with the TRW wizard once I go to my templates I can hit my TRW magic separator and then that will separate each one of those for me. So this is my inside fill and then my lace is like that. And if you really wanted to, if, say this was maybe for a um, decal or anything like that, we have the registration mark so I can just shift click and it will add the registration marks for me as well. So once you have these lined up, the, once you hit the two, the separator, you can hit the TRW magic separator and that will do all the rest of the work for you. So does anyone have any questions about how the vector fonts work and how they're a little bit different from the rhinestone? So with the again with the with the vector fonts, once we have this set up and even so this is still in our cheer form, you can go ahead and stretch these out now once you hit those. Um, you can the vinyl we can shrink, we can pull from the side. It's gonna distort the inside image. Um, but you can still make this as tall or wide as you want. Whereas a rhinestone font, once we have that typed out, so let me hit baseball, and let me go back, 
and just hit so let's go to our baseball 26 or GW 26 once I hit this resize button and I hit yes this font cannot be resized so if I wanted this a little bit bigger well now if I go click on these stone sizes you can see that they're 0.172 which does not match our 0.13 for the SS tens so to make a rhinestone font larger or smaller you'll actually have to switch the stone size so now let me hit the resize we'll hit yes so now these are all perfect SS10 our overall height and width is 4.7 inches wide by 1.75 inches tall so the only way to change those dimensions are by is by changing the stone size so if I go to SS6 stones I hit my resize now our width is 3.5 by 1.3 and if I wanted a lot larger, I could go to 16s. So now it's six and a half inches wide by two inches tall. Or I could even go to my 30s or my 34s. And now it makes it 11 inches wide by four inches tall. Um, so someone asked, sorry, um, Dax, what do you mean by uh, what numbers were you talking about? up here the SS 34 oh, okay got you um, so right here what with our fonts um, as we created more of them we just started naming them numbers so when you see TRW 16 Western that's just the name of the font um, so if you purchase this on a website or if you're looking for a certain night um, um, number it's just that's just the name of the font so um, you'll see we have TRW you know 5000 or something like that it's just um, different designers have different numbers that they use so right here you'll see the 5070 faded um, not necessarily there's not really anything significant about the numbers um, that's just how they were named so don't get confused by any of that you know 5300 the one thing that you um, that we do have though is that we, let me show you these as well. Some of the rhinestone um, fonts come as packs. Um, so let's go. And so this one here. So this 5060, TRW 5060, we have a left fade, a right fade, a bottom fade, and I believe there's a top fade as well. Um, so some of the fonts will have an A, B, D, uh, A, B, C, D, different versions. Um, some will be the fade. So in this particular one, you'll see that the fade starts on the left side. And then or the fade starts yeah, on the left and gets really tight on the right. And that's the version, the left fade. So then we have a right fade and a bottom. Some, however, let's go back to the wizard. Let me try to find one of these sets for you. All right, so right here, you'll see all these TRW 1001s. So because we can't just have a font, go, we can't just stretch a font to fit the exact size we want, some of these fonts will come in a lot of different um, heights. So you can see TRW 101 2 inches, and I'll just make a few different examples of these. We have the TRW 2.6 inches, and the 1 inch, and the 1.5. So as you can see, because of the different sizes, you can get more detail in these fonts. So this one is our largest. It's the 2.6. And let me put these in actual order so it looks a little bit easier. So now I can just highlight all those. We'll go to our tens and hit our resize. And yes. Back one step. Yeah. 
done it with the background. So this is our largest font, the 2.6, and then the next one would be the 2.0. So you can see they're the same style font, but instead of having to change, instead of manually having to change these to maybe sixes to get the same height of the 2.0, they went ahead and just made the same font they had to get rid of one row of stones, um, but that way you can use the same style of font and get it in different sizes and heights to make it fit. You know, maybe you want to use the same font on a extra, you know, a kid's small, but on the adults you wanted to use the same style, but you needed it larger. Instead of using a bigger stone, some of these fonts will include just a larger um, example of that font. So the last thing, last font I really want to go into is the monograms. So again, all of our fonts are going to start with TRW. Now, the monograms will be TRW mono, and it's obviously going to be mono or gram, but some of them just, you can see down here, just have the mono. So I always just, I don't type out monogram, I'll just type out TRW mono, and then you should see all the ones you have installed in your uh, library here. So when I click on these monogram fonts, you can see that they don't really have, uh, they're not perfectly monogram, they're not a nice circle yet. Um, even though this says TRW football, it just has those laces going through, but it's not very clean. So the way these fonts work is once you actually have the text typed out, so this one will do TRW. Um, once you actually have that typed out, all you have to do is hit the M at the top for monogram, and that will shape the monogram for you. So you can see how clean this text looks now. Same with the football. When I hit the M, it puts it in that football shape for us and does it, and takes out those laces really nicely. This one's our TRW heart, so you can see that it has the nice harp shape. So once you hit that M, it's going to shape the monogram for you and get rid of anything that it needs to. So some of these fonts, you might have to click one or two buttons, but again, all of it's going to be done pretty much in this font wizard or this font tab. Um, and again, you'll see the upper and lower. Most of these fonts, the upper and lower are going to be the same, just so they all match up. Um, but you'll see it still has a font preview for these as well. So does anyone have any questions about what we've covered so far? Does anyone need to see anything again? All right. So the last thing I want to show you is using the envelope feature with our fonts. Now. Is everyone is anyone familiar with the envelope? Has anyone used that before? Yeah, it's um, TTF. And that's going to be true type fonts. Um, yeah, so the envelope feature is a great way just to add a little bit extra to your font. You can shape it. You can you know make a nice bend with it. Um, when you're working with any of our vector fonts or, you know, a vector, a vector font in general, it doesn't have to be ours, it's really easy to use. So we'll just do soccer, and we'll make it all the same. So we'll do all uppercase, and let me just do one of our athletic fonts. So let me show you this one too. So again, you can see here, this one has a font preview, an upper and a lower. So it has a back fill and then an inside fill. So to get that inside fill, all I have to do is hit that 2. So again, if you're seeing two different previews, you can always hit that 2, and then you'll get that inside fill. All right. So once we have our font like this, once we have it all um, set up, I can just group both of those together. So now this is just reading as one object right now. And under Effects, you'll see the envelope. Once we click that, you'll see the envelope feature pull up on the right hand side. So if you don't have any object selected, you'll see this grayed out. Now with our font too, 
um, you'll make want to make sure that you group it first otherwise you're just going to add uh, the envelope to one of the colors instead of both at once so right now I have this group together so it's reading that as one object so now when I click it you'll see the envelope gives us this option of adding a new or adding new or adding a, pre a preset so down here you'll see the different types of envelopes we can add a straight line a single arc which we're going to mostly use a double arc or an unconstrained so other than that you can pretty much leave it putty and then once you have that middle one selected the single arc we can hit add new so once we hit add new you'll see these blue boxes come around our text so again with the vector fonts you can pretty much do whatever you want to it if I want to just pull that up to get a nice arc there I can um, if I want to hold control and grab the bottom it will lift the top up as well to get a nice arc like that if I hold shift and bring the bottom up it'll bring the top in and squeeze my font like that so I'll just come in both sides like that um, and again you can use you can play around with these a lot um, by holding control whatever you do to the top or bottom it will do the same to the opposite side so if I go down on the top it's gonna pull the bottom down as well if I go up on the bottom it's gonna hold or it's gonna make the top go up as well now the shift is gonna do the opposite so if I hold shift and pull down the top will go up if I hold shift and bring the bottom to the top, the top's going to come closer to the bottom and give you that squeezed look. So by playing around with these envelopes, you can get, you know, you can just add a little bit more to your text, and just make your design stand out a little bit more. Now, with again, with the vector text, you can do this pretty much with no problem. It's going to work fine. When we're using the envelope for any type of rhinestone font, you have to be very careful when you're actually shaping your font. So let's go ahead and we'll do a couple of examples. So let's see what we're working with. I'm look for some sort of F. So we'll do this one, we'll do the 91. We'll do 95, we'll do a two color, and we'll do an R. Alright, so we have our font just like this, and again, even a rhinestone can be a two color font, so we have our inside and outside, I just hit the two, and then I got the inside fill as well. So, before we group everything together, we want to resize our font, so we'll make this SS10s, hit resize, and yes. So now all these should be perfect 0.13 circles. And you know, you can go around and check a few of them, but you'll see that they're all perfect circles. Once we have our font sized out, that's when we're going to control and group this entire, uh, all the rhinestones as one object. So once we do that, you can see that add new appears on our envelope. So from here, it's pretty much going to be the same setup. You just hit Add New. Whatever you want to do to your design, you can. If you just want to raise this part up, we can do that. If we want to hold Control and raise them both up, we can do that as well. Now, just because we can do this doesn't mean it's actually going to work correctly. So let me do a couple of examples and show you how you'll have to edit this once you add the envelope with this rhinestone. So again, just hit add new. We'll just do a simple one of holding control and moving them both up just to get a nice little arc. Now, when I do that, you can start to see right away that these aren't perfect circles anymore. So what we can do is just ungroup our design and instead of hitting the resize, we're going to hit the one next to it and we're going to replace all zones. So you just hit this once. You're not going to see any, you know, do you want to change all these to make sure they're 0 0.13. You're not going to get any of that type of message once we hit replace. But now you can see that some of these stones aren't as clean as they once were. So down here, this is very uniform. 
looks really nice. Once we add that envelope, it stretches these stones out a little bit. So once we hit the replace all, you'll see that they go from really lopsided circles to perfect circles, but they're still a little bit out of place. So you can manually grab each one of these stones and kind of move it to make it look a little bit nicer in your design. So sometimes it's usually like the corners. So the in this example, the S and the R are going to usually need the most work. Where you once you get to these center letters, they usually don't need too much editing. So from here, you know, if you wanted to, you can maybe bring a couple of these stones over just to help look a little bit better. But for the most part, it's really going to be these outside. Um, letters that you're going to have to fix. So you can see down here, they're just going to get really tight in some areas. Um, so we can just kind of manually move them around and clean it up. And if we need to add another stone, you can do that as well. So if we want to really show where this kind of goes back up, I can drop a stone there and then try to edit my design to make all those work. So you can still add envelopes to rhinestones, but again, you can see with the vector, we didn't have to do any of this editing after. With the rhinestone, you'll have to go back and make sure you edit it. So we could do a really big example and do the same thing. But if I do a bigger arc, you'll see once I hit the replace all, there's going to be a lot of work to do. It's all, You see all the overlapping stones and everything like that. Once again, you get to the center letters, the C's, and there's really not too much editing, but once you get to those R and the E, it's going to almost be too much with this design. So you can always shape your rhinestone text as well with the envelope tool, but it's not always going to work as well as the vector fonts. So I recommend, you know, if you are, just do slight envelopes, and then it tends to look a little bit nicer, whereas something like this, you'd almost have to pretty much do the whole S and R yourself, so it's not going to really save you any time using a rhinestone font if you're going to manipulate it this much. All right, so that pretty much sums up our rhinestone font webinar. Do you guys have any more questions or do you guys want to see anything again? Is there anything I didn't cover that you'd like to see? Well, thank you guys so much. All of you guys have been great. Um, definitely um, check out our upcoming webinars later this week. Um, I'll have one tomorrow at 8 and another one on Friday at 11. Um, tomorrow we'll be going over converting um, rhinestone, already created rhinestone designs to vectors. And on Friday we'll be going over some um, time-saving tips and just shortcuts using the design wizard. Um, Lisa also has a webinar on Friday at 4, and Matt has a webinar at Friday on Friday at 1, going over some of the new live template discs and some of the new packs we released and some of the updates to the live template. So definitely check all those out. Um, all of our webinars will be recorded, so if you guys have to go back and view anything, um, those will be available to you as well. Usually it takes about 48 hours to get them updated and uploaded to uh, YouTube. So they will be, you can either search our YouTube channel or you will see a recorded link on your download items. So just give us a day or two and then it should be updated. So it will give you the exact link to the YouTube channel. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys. You are all great. And again, if you have any other additional questions, feel free to give us a call at 941-755-1696 or shoot us an inf or shoot us an email at info at the Um someone asked where it will be in your order history. So I don't actually have like an account, but if you go to just your login, you should see once you do that once you hit login, you should be have an account right here. And if you hit your account you'll see another screen pop up with like your download history and uh, a few other examples here and if you hit download items you should see all the links in your all the like any webinar you should see if it's a recorded or it's, sorry if it's a premium or a paid webinar you should see the recorded the guide 
the registration link, and any of the designs. If it's just a free webinar like this, you'll just see a recorded, or sorry, a registration link, and then that eventually will turn into a recorded link. So um, it will update automatically once we upload the new file. So right now you'll probably just see you know registration link in your history um, with the free ones. Once it's updated and recorded, it will switch and say recorded link, and then you should see it there. But if you got again, if you have any problems finding in those, just give us a call and uh, we can get on your computer and just walk you through that real quick. All right. Well, you guys have a great, great rest of your day, and hopefully see you in the webinars this week.